So in this uh, schematic view, we have only shown the, the path of the steam here. The fresh steam comes in here and the steam produced in uh, evaporator 1 goes into evaporator 2. The steam produced in evaporator 2 goes into evaporator 3 and so on. But what about the other side, the feed side? Well, to understand the different uh, feed patterns of multi-effect evaporator and why we choose different, we need to look at concentration, viscosity and temperature. So if you, for example, have a sucrose in water solution, uh, you have an, a decreasing viscosity with increasing temperature. So at low temperatures, the viscosity is higher, so it doesn't flow as easy. And uh, at high temperature, you have a lower viscosity. And if you instead increase the concentration, what you get is an increasing viscosity uh, with increasing concentration. So why is this important? Well, it's important because it affects the heat transfer coefficient. Now, if you think of heat transfer coefficient, what matters here is how turbulent the flow will be. But how turbulent the flow will be will depend on the viscosity. It's easier to be, for something to, to become turbulent if the viscosity is low. So try to fill in this table here. When will the viscosity be, be low and when will it be high? And when will the viscosity be intermediate? And what about the apparent heat transfer coefficients? When the, will they be low? When will they be high? And when will you have intermediate values? So we have low concentration, high concentration, low temperature and high temperature. So four different combinations. Pause here and try to figure out this. OK, did you manage? If you have low temperature and high concentration, that means that the viscosity must be high, right? Because low temperature, you get higher viscosity, high concentration, you get higher viscosity. What does that? Uh, and if you instead have low concentration, and high temperature, there are two reasons why you get low viscosity, because low concentrations you get lower con uh, low risk viscosity and high temperature you get lower viscosity as well and in the other two cases you have intermediate viscosities what about the k values well if the viscosity is high then the heat transfer coefficient will be low and if the viscosity is low then the heat transfer coefficient will be high and in the other cases you have intermediate values and this thing, this combination, uh, together with things like heat sensitivity of the product, is important when choosing feed pattern. And there are different options. You can have a parallel feed. Here uh, you split the feed into multiple inputs, two, three, four, whatever. Uh, and then each... Uh, each uh, evaporate here works at a different temperature, but it has the same feed, the same uh, feed conditions. And you need to, to pump uh, the feed in, in all. Uh, you can combine uh, different, of course, you can have parallel feed first uh, in, for example, two evaporators and then have another feed pattern for the other evaporators you have. So the steam goes like this. The fresh steam goes into evaporator one and leaves the system again. The vapor produced in evaporator one goes into evaporator two and out again. And the steam produced in evaporator two goes into evaporator three, while the feed goes in and out of all evaporators simultaneously. Uh, forward feed, uh, then the feed moves in the same direction as the steam does. So uh, 
the steam goes the same way as, as always, but the feed now goes first into the first one and then it continues into the second one and then into the third one. You see they follow the same overall pattern, the steam and the, the feed, so therefore we call it forward feed. It looks a bit like co-current uh, and in Swedish we actually use the same word there. Backward feed, well that is the opposite. And I should say about the forward feed by the way, that you, you of course need to pump uh, the feed into the first, but then the pressure is lower in, in evaporator 2 and 3, uh, which means that you might not need to pump uh, from 1 to 2 and from 2 to 3. It might happen anyway because of the pressure difference. In backward feed however, uh, you feed, uh, you put the feed into the last evaporator, which means that although uh, although uh, the steam still goes in the same direction, now the feed goes in the, in the opposite direction, so it goes from low pressure to higher higher pressure and higher pressure even. So that means that you definitely need a pump between each. In a mixed feed, well, uh, it's uh, the mixed feed is neither parallel or uh, forward or backward. It's something else. So here, for example, you have it comes into evaporator two first, and then it goes to three, and last it co comes to one. You could also have it uh, in this with only three evaporators. You could have it going into number two and then going into one, and at last going into number three. So what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages, the pros and cons? Well, uh, for the forward feed, you have a high concentration that meets a low temperature. And that's suitable for heat sensitive products, because in high concentration you have higher viscosity, uh, so the mixing might not be so good, so some part of the liquid might be hotter than other parts of the liquid, and that's not a good idea for heat sensitive products. Uh, you need fewer pumps. Uh, so what are the advantages and disadvantages, the pros and cons with forward feed and backward feed? Well, uh, for forward feed, you have a high concentration that meets a low temperature. And, and that's suitable for heat sensitive products. And why is that so? Well, at a high concentration, uh, the, you have a more viscous solution, so it doesn't mix as well. Uh, and thus you might get temperature differences in, in the liquid. And if you have temperature difference and, and bad mixing, and it's in contact with a high temperature, you might reach above a critical temperature and thus destroy your product. Uh, but here the high concentration meet the low temperature, reducing the risk for destroying your product. Uh, with forward feed you have fewer pumps uh, and you don't need preheaters because uh, the pressure decreases. So you might is even get flashing when uh, the flow comes, for example, from, from evaporator 1 to evaporator 2. Uh, you do, however, have a low temperature and high concentration in the last evaporator. While that was uh, something positive uh, when it comes to heat sensitive product, it's not that good from a heat transfer point of view because this will give you a low K value, a low, over, a low apparent heat transfer coefficient. With backward feed, you get more even K values because on one side you have high temperature meeting high concentration and other side you have low temperature meeting low concentration, so you will have intermediate values all over, basically. Uh, so you tend to get uh, more even values, more, more similar values in the different evaporators. This is, this is not suitable for heat sensitive products, uh, because now you have high temperature and high concentration, as, and as we said before, that's a bad idea if you have heat sensitive products. You need more pumps, 
because you, you're moving uh, the feed from low pressure to higher and higher and higher pressure. And since you do that, the boiling point increases uh, while you go from, from the lower pressure to higher pressure. So you might also uh, want to put in preheaters between the evaporators.